Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge. To joining me today, I have Benji King, full-time government employee, part-time DJ, and full-time horror movie enthusiast. Benji, how you doing today, man? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Uh, kind of getting to the end of the quarantine, I hope. Everything going good with you guys out there? Yeah, you know, working from home. Um, I'm actually training for a new position right now at home which has kind of been a little bit sketchy or at least stressful, but um, I'm, I'm glad to be safe and uh, I'm hoping that this shit gets over with soon. Yeah. I'm glad to see that you're okay. Thank you for taking all the necessary precautions. Um, one thing me and him were just talking about the movie that we are going to be talking about today is Benji's first horror movie, which was tourist trap. Now, I want to let everybody know, whenever I talk about someone and I know what their first horror movie was, I like to go back and rewatch the movie so I can kind of be caught up a little bit. Um, I was looking for Tourist Trap on streaming services. Everything I found was saying PG, like this can't be the movie, but it is. This movie is rated PG. If you've seen this movie, that might blow you away, but did you know that this is rated PG? Um, I did not. I, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't even, it never even occurred to me in all my life. And, and it's a film that's been with me, obviously, all my life. Yeah. Um, and, and I can tell you that um, as a seven-year-old kid, the first time I saw it, uh, I, I, I guarantee you um, the rating system was not <laughs> adequate. I mean, maybe it doesn't, one thing I will say, it doesn't have any titties. It doesn't have any, right. like, I, I mean, it, it, it very soft, like, uh, you know, when they're in the, that lagoon at the early part, the which, skinny <laughs> dipping. which is fucking hilarious. There's no reason <laughs> that they would go skinny dipping, but, but sure enough, there they are. The cards broke down, of course. Yep. So, Hey, let's jump in this lagoon. But I love but the one girl. She's like, we can't go swimming. We don't have bathing suits. And the other girl's like, well, who needs bathing suits? <laughs> right. That's uh, I believe that is actually uh, Tanya Roberts, isn't it? Um, she went on to be in one of my all-time favorite films, The Beastmaster. She was Kiri, his, like, girlfriend. And so, anyways, um, I always remembered her from that. But, uh, sure, yeah, exactly. There's not – there's no sex. I don't believe um, – you know, there's not any strong adult comment or content other than people getting fucking killed. Right. And even like one thing I did notice about the movie, because I realized it was PG, I was kind of even eagle eyeing it a little bit. There's not a lot of blood and gore in this movie either. No, and no, not at all. About the bloodiest scene you have is one of the coolest scenes, in my opinion, is at the beginning when the stuff is getting thrown at the guy, when he's up against the wall and then the pipe goes into him. And then you hear the blood coming out of the pipe, hitting the ground. Like, I absolutely love that scene. Okay, so how that all went. Okay, when I was seven years old, we had um, in Kansas City on Channel 5, there was, or maybe it was Channel 4, I believe it was Channel 4. Um, it was called Creature Feature. And it was hosted by Cremacia Mortem. And she was this, like, local TV personality who put on this, like, kind of like an Elvira sort of thing. Sure. And, and uh, every Friday night, typically they would show like Creature from the Black Lagoon or, you know, the classics like Frankenstein and Dracula and shit like that that wasn't really all that scary and it was kind of boring for a little kid. Right. But, but um, I will never forget, as long as I live, that opening, that whole opening scene where, dude, of course, I, I mean, I, well, we'll get to it in a minute, but like... Um, that 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 whole scene was ingrained in my my head as a child and it scared the absolute hell out of me mm -hmm. um you know he, he goes into this clearly abandoned gas station <laughs> i mean it's totally abandoned and you know first of all and he's by himself mm -hmm. and he starts wandering around and he goes in this room and and if if, if you remember that 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 mannequin that's like laying there in the bed the second you see its face, it's fucking horrifying. It's like oh, that yeah. moment on, 
and then everything jumping out and the shit getting thrown at him and the pipe through the side. Yes. I mean, you know, not to not to downplay the rest of the film, but but that is like hard to, to there's nothing like that in the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. There's some pretty cool shit that goes down. Um it's some interesting things, but that whole sequence and, and, and scene, it was kind of like they shot their load on that. And then, and then the rest of the movie just kind of, they kind of wrote it as they went, which they, I mean, I think it's good. I enjoy it. But oh, um, that's what I was going to bring up. I, I do enjoy this movie. This is a movie that um, even with a PG rating, it's a scary movie, especially for a kid. One scene we'll talk about here in a minute, but um I do agree with you that the first, you know, 15 minutes of this movie, you're like, man, how the fuck are they going to top this? <laughs> right. And, and here's <laughs> the thing, though. So, like, I, you know how, you know, obviously certain movies in your life, you remember the experience of when you first saw them because the impression it leaves on you. And it also, for people like you and I and our friends, it, it like, leads us down a path later. Like, for me, um, I've if, 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 if it's – co-eds on a road trip i'm hooked i don't give a fuck where they're going <laughs> what they're doing if they're on a road trip man i'm i'm hooked i'm i'm all about that and so mm-hmm. um and, and that's the interesting thing about tourist trap it never really tells you where they're going right they're they're just going somewhere and they end up in this little town and um but but i remember the moment seeing that like like it was yesterday it left such an impression on me and uh and then, obviously, throughout my life, that was kind of like the go-to. Because, you know, I, I might have seen some, some other type of, of films from that genre to an extent before that. But that was the first movie that I remember that, like, when, when I was a kid that, 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 that hooked me. Because as scared as I was, I couldn't get enough of it. Right. And it's funny. I'm so glad you said that, man. Because that's why I do this uh, podcast is because house for me did the same thing and it's good to know that i'm not the only one that first horror movie that we really really remember it really leads like you said it leads us down that path of where we are now and yeah that's why this means so much to me to have you guys come on here because feeling that same experience from you guys people that i look up to people that i'm friends with you know and hearing you have the same experience that i have with our horror movies it's such a cool feeling man it's almost that like that unity feeling that we all have so to be able to sit down and actually talk about it is such a cool experience for me, man. And I really appreciate you coming on. No, I, I'm, I appreciate being here. And House is another one of those films for me, too. Like, House 2, they're both like, oh, fuck, man. I love that shit. Um, <laughs> me, too. <laughs> there was a, shortly after I saw uh, Tour's Trap, one of our neighbors got a VCR, which, you know, this was like in the early 80s, so it was kind of a new thing. And... Um, you know, my mom really didn't have a filter as far as like, oh, you shouldn't be watching that. It was like, eh, it's all right. You'll be all right. It's just a movie. <laughs> so we watched The Prowler. Do you know that movie? I don't. Oh shit, man! Look it up. It's uh, um, I don't, I don't know any of the specs on it other than that it's probably like eighty, eighty-one maybe. But it's like some. The premise is like some Vietnam vet that was killed in action comes back or something like that. And just fucking right. kills all these kids. It's pretty awesome. But uh, I got it written down. The Prowler. P-R-O-W-L-E-R. The Prowler. Okay. Yeah. There was a minute it was on Netflix, which um, years ago. Um, and I rewatched it and uh, it was a lot harder to get through just a lot slower, but it still sure. scared the hell out of me. It, it has those moments, you know, he's wearing combat boots and, they're under the bed and you see them come in and I mean that kind of shit. But, um, I, uh, you know, I definitely, when it comes to tourist traps specifically, that was something that, um, like kind of set the bar for me. And it is interesting that it was PG because there's no way in hell that movie would be PG now. Not a chance. Real quick, real quick chime in. Love the shirt, man. Big oh, shout thanks, out to Orphan Radio. Yeah, love those guys. I, I had I had to throw that in there, man. I absolutely love the shirt. No, absolutely. Oh. Matt, Matt's my homeboy. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a long time uh, guest on uh, Orphan Radio. So if you ever get bored, go back and check out some of the old episodes. We do a lot of fun stuff, and uh, obviously Matt has interviewed so many amazing people, and uh, 
he, he's you know he it's a it's a great show it's a lot of fun I, I was lucky enough to have matt on here great guy still talk to Matt. i love that guy he's a great dude love orphan radio i'm gonna have to go back tonight and listen to some of your guys' old episodes man because i can only imagine how entertaining the two of you together would be <laughs> so, so it's pretty hilarious we've known each other for quite a while so so we 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 have a lot of fun well that's that makes it more genuine too when you guys are friends and you're able to sit down and talk it's just like two friends bullshitting at a table you know what i mean like that's oh yeah better I mean, that way we turn each other on to different songs and we always finish, we, we try to finish every episode we do with a Ramon song. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's been fun over the years trying to, you know, come up with a different Ramon song to play and, you know, but uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, good stuff. And Matt obviously is him and I have, that was one of the first things that we, I mean, we, we, got, we met each other through music and then we went to KU together and then, um, horror and true crime are the things that like kind of bonded us yeah and uh so over the years you know we've seen a lot of movies together and you know done a lot of this stuff and i've talked about this on previous episodes and this is just my opinion besides comic books there's really nothing like the horror genre um you don't have rom-com con you know what i mean you have horror cons. right right you know what i mean like horror it really really does people that are ho true horror fans the minute you meet each other, you're connected like that. You, you just have that common ground with each other. There's no black and white. There's no gay and straight. There's horror fan. What's up, buddy? How you doing? That's exactly. I, you know, I wish the world was more like that, man. I, I wish we could be blind to the things that we see so clearly right now that don't fucking matter. Well, I think it's, you know, I just recently watched um, the uh, Child's Play redo. And I fucking loved it, first of all. I thought yes. it was great. I, I thank you. I, I was I was skeptical because I, I you know I, on when it comes to I'm not I'm not like instinctively anti remake or reboot or anything. Um, now some of like I couldn't get through the 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 Nightmare on Elm Street remake. I just thought like the original is such a classic that's perfectly done that I think a retelling or like an extended universe type of story like they did with Friday the Thirteenth is a better pet sort of exactly like they did with child's play but like dude child's play i mean the beginning it's a fucking disgruntled dude in a chinese factory yes. the, i love that so much i mean it's, I, I just did a review on that movie on my channel i don't know if you've seen it or not i have not and i'm gonna that, check it out though oh i talk about on there how there's no charles lee ray how there's no ade dewey dembala and that really bothered me but you know what now that i think about it I couldn't imagine having Mark Hamill being the Brad Dorif character. So I really think the fact that they didn't have Charles Lee Ray and they didn't have the, them playing the hide the soul isn't really so much as a knock. It's more of like an honor to Brad Dorif. Like we're not even going to touch that part because that's yours. You know, right. That's your thing. We're going to move on from that. And we're going to make it completely different out of respect to you. And I'm with you. I love the Child's Play remake. I love the characters. I think the deaths are fucking brutal. I love how, Chucky for 90% of the movie, you can relate to him. You know, he's like, oh, that stepdad's me and you. I'm going to fucking kill him then. Right. You know, so there's a lot in that movie that I, I adore that movie, man. I love it so much. One of the other things I loved about it was that he learns how to kill by watching Texas Chainsaw 2. I Dude, love yes. that. I, I'm like, I'm, the second that came on, I was like, because I'm already, I was already feeling it. You know, I'm already like, okay, this might not be so bad. And then, <laughs> they're watching Texas Chainsaw 2, and I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. This is perfect. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that, what, one of the things about that movie, too, is, like, when he asks Andy what his name is, and Andy calls him Han Solo. That makes you belly laugh, dude. Like, yes. Oh, dude, you just tried to name Luke Skywalker Han Solo. How fucking great is that? And then, and then he, and then he, I'm Chuck, Ch 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 Chucky. I love it, dude. <laughs> he just says, fuck you, I'm Chucky. I'm so glad you liked the movie, man. If you yeah. get the chance, please check out my review. I think you might enjoy it. Oh, I'm definitely gonna movie. I'm definitely gonna check that out. Yeah. When you just started um, talking about the Child's Play remake, I was like, oh shit, I hope he doesn't hate it because I fucking love this movie. No, I, I actually really that was one of the ones that I really um shit, are you there? Yeah, I, I lost you on screen. Okay, hold on. I gotta we'll have to um there we go. I had a call yeah. come through, so hopefully that doesn't happen again while we're um, in the middle of something fun. So, uh, uh, no, like um, that one, 
it's probably so far my favorite remake that I've seen recently. Um, I, I, you know, I've, I've watched the episode with, or, you know, with you and Matt and Josh as well. And so, you know, you, you guys get into the remake stuff. And I guess for me, it depends on how it's done. Um, because some of them are pretty, like, like, I am not a fan at all of the Rob Zombie Halloween movies. I didn't even see the second one. The first one, it was like fucking Slipknot. I mean, he had all these masks and he just was terrible. It was and a fucking music video. It was. And, and that's the, way what that I they, said. the way that they portrayed Michael Myers' childhood made it even more ridiculous because the idea that what, what was so scary about Michael Myers as a kid is that he's from this normal family. He's this regular ass little kid who just mm -hmm. snaps. In the fucking Rob Zombie movie, he's like a fucking Slipknot fan and he's like yep. this fucked up family and, you know, stepdad and shit, which I, you know, I can get into that if it were a totally different movie, but um, the thing for me is like, I, and again, this is not a stab at Rob Zombie. I am, I appreciate what he has done for the horror genre. Um, he is very big in the horror genre and I respect it, but I, it's just not for me, man. Like the house of a thousand corpses, the devil's rejects. And to me, that's all the new Halloween's were is they were the house of a thousand corpses with Michael Myers put in there. And it's just, that's not for me again. No, no disrespect here to anybody. It's just not for me. Right. I mean, well, for me, like the thing with the House of a Thousand Corpses is that like it, it starts off great and it has a lot of potential. It just it kind of drones on and then it ends up it has some Texas Chainsaw 2 kind of stuff to it where the cavern is like there, there's some things about it that are cool. But but for the most part, yeah, I'm with you. It's just not I don't get excited about right. those movies. And, and Devil's Rejects was a one time view for me. I watched it once and I'll never watch it again. It's just kind of yeah, a it shitty movie. It was a halftime view for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, got, well, I got about halfway through it. You know, it's just, yeah, again, I mean, it's just I'm much, it's like ICP, man. Not for me, but I respect the hell out of you. If you can have people walking down the street wearing your clown makeup, you're doing something right. Even though it's not for me, I respect you. Same thing with Rob Zombie, man. Not for me. I like some of your music, but your movies, just not a fan. I'm, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I and that's another thing is that we, you know, I appreciate when somebody's into that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. obviously because it, you know he could do anything with his time and his money and the yeah. fact that that he wants to make movies and and you know that's pretty cool but at the same time you know i'm i'm more into you know like some of my my more i don't even know how modern they are anymore but like you know of the of the 21st century type horror movies that i'm into um i don't know what year did wrong turn come out oh I want to say oh four oh five. Yeah, that's yeah somewhere around there. That's like one of those like more modern. That that's like my archetypal like 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 movie I want to see. Like mm -hmm. it's a road trip. <laughs> it, it's it's <laughs> in, it, inbred like lunatics. Yeah. Um. Th th that's like the kind of thing. And and I think I don't know how you feel about that movie, but um, love it. That's one of that's that's almost a perfect film for me. The second one is amazing as well. Um, I like one. I like two. I can handle three. After that, it's downhill. Yeah. However, well, after that, they're. I don't know if you they, know or not, but they're rebooting the movie, really? and I've had a I've had a couple people, um, Chani Morrow, and um, Damien Maffei, that are going to be in the reboot on the channel as well. I mean, I've talked to them out, outside of here and get excited about this wrong turn reboot, okay. man. It's going to be fucking insane from what they're telling me. Well, I'm excited about it because that, 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 that genre of twist is my favorite. Anytime you're talking about inbred people and like the, in West Virginia, mm -hmm. I'm hooked right there. That's, that's <laughs> all you gotta tell me. Like, I mean, um, they, they did such a great job with the first one. And the second one was of, of course a comedy. I mean, it was, it was supposed yeah. to be funny, but it's, it really is. It's fucking hilarious. Well, the second one had Henry Rollins in it, didn't it? It did. It did. Yeah. And they were doing like a, a survival thing, like a reality show out in the woods. Yes. <laughs> Which I did like that one, though, man. So I liked awesome. that one a lot. Yeah. That one was uh, – that had some pretty memorable moments in it. Um, and it's not so dissimilar from Tourist Trap. And that's, that's mm -hmm. kind of like for me um, – it's sort of like Tucker and Dale versus Evil. I love uh, Tucker and Dale. Uh, that is such a great movie, and there was rumors at some point that they were going to do another one, but it's just never—it's never come to fruition. So I wish that they would, because that first one, uh, 
it takes every great aspect of the genre and the format and, and it and it does it so well. I just I oh dude. But it flips it on its head too. Like it's just that's it's what I mean. It's great. Sorry for the pun, but it's a series of unfortunate events, man. It's so, oh my god, that's such a fun movie, man. Oh, I love it. He's a well officer. <laughs> believe. We've had a doozy of a day. He just I mean, ran head first right into the woods. Right into they were kids are killing themselves on my property. I mean, it's it it really is like a fucking just one of those things where you feel satisfied when you're done but like at the end of that movie mm -hmm. you're like wow that was a really satisfying film and yeah uh, while we're talking about tucker and dale versus evil a friend of mine let me know this and i looked into it this is completely true at the beginning scene when the, he's eating the pickled eggs mm -hmm. and they're at the gas station they had to do that scene so many times that he was physically sick oh so if you watch <laughs> When he's putting the eggs in his mouth, like he's almost like not wanting to do this anymore. Okay, like, it's it's so funny. Like I have a good I, friend. I've, I've never I've seen it a few times, but I've never actually taken you know looked at that. But I'll have to pay attention I'm to so it. I'm so glad you brought that movie up, man. Cause that's such an underrated movie. It's in my top five horror comedies, man. That's such a good movie. Oh, it's it really is. Uh, it it kind of makes me it reminded me of which. This is another one of those halfway ones for me. Um, Cabin Fever, the first one, mm -hmm. I loved it. I thought it was fucking great. But then they they did a remake of it, and yeah. the remake is basically it is a, a, a straight remake. And it was like, what's the fucking point of this? Right. And, and it was worse. It wasn't. I mean, the the original. I mean, there was a couple issues with the original one that that you know it had some problems, but mm -hmm. the new one was kind of a waste of time to me i think the new one wasn't it like a bunch of teens in it like a like prom or some shit i i mean well that was the second one that was that was oh. uh cabin fever 2 what's okay. his name ty west i think uh directed that i think um, i've seen that like once but i don't remember much about it it was it was one of those movies that i didn't love i didn't hate it just didn't stick with me at all no i mean it was this there was a you know they tried they tried to do like a the, there's a recurring character, the the cop guy, the shirt or the deputy dude, um, mm -hmm. and, and they brought him back for the second one, and it, it's it's hard to watch. I mean, it's pretty <laughs> difficult. But but the remake is even worse, and and it's like you know, I, sometimes I feel like I'm not one of those people that, 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 that like like we've been saying. I mean, I appreciate remakes if they're done well, and if it's if it's done you know with the thought of it being a remake but where they just try to like scene by scene recreate the original it just kind of no i don't no i mean it's like you got to add something to it or do something different about it the only scene by scene remake i've ever liked and everybody shits on me for this but i liked the vince vaughn psycho i was just getting um, ready to say that one that one was good and yeah, Ash, I, and like that that was a good movie that was um i'm a huge psycho fan of course mm -hmm. Um, Psycho one, two, and three. I love two and three. Those were like my childhood. Like those came out when I was a kid. So um, sure, I always really loved Psycho two. But uh, I, I I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. And and th that was the whole point of that though. Was they did it frame by frame. They did like an yep. actual modernized remake of it. And, um, and that's what I don't get. That's why I argue with people. They're like, oh, how can you like that? I'm like, dude, if you like the original, how can you not like this? It's frame by frame, scene by the scene. same movie. Maybe on. Yeah, is it unnecessary? Maybe sure, I could go with that. Maybe it's unnecessary, but they modernized it for people today that didn't see it back then, that don't watch black and white movies. Even though Hitchcock is a fucking genius, but there are people out there that see black and white and they're just turned off right away. Right. You know? I mean, to me, I see so, black and white and I'm intrigued. Yep, <laughs> that's what gets me excited, especially about <laughs> the original Psycho. But like, um, you know, some I I think that. It just depends on who's doing it and why they're doing it. How do you, how do you feel about the uh, Friday the Thirteenth? I love the Friday the Thirteenth remake. Um, personally, I think it's awesome that they made him like a survivalist badass. Uh, he's not just this creep that's walking in the woods. Like he's a bad motherfucker in this movie, and he, he has a. Go ahead. Well, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but the only thing that the the, the biggest problem that I had with it was that Jason took a hostage, and See, Jason doesn't fucking take hostages. I, I, I can see your point there, but the thing that I like about that is in how in uh, Friday the 13th 2, 
they play on his emotions with his mom when she puts on the sweater and she's right. like, Jason, be a good boy. You know, so I think that that's kind of their tie into this. Like he sees her and that plays on his emotion. Like, oh, this, I can't kill her. You know, so that that's where I always felt that from because he did have that in Friday too. You know, she put on the sweater and she's like, Jason, be right. a good boy and listen to mom. And it kind of softened him up. So that's where I made that I mean, I, I, in my brain. I get it. I, I think that for me, it was just that it, it's it just like I, Jason. Uh, full disclosure: Jason is like my favorite, like okay. slasher. Um, I love Michael Myers. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, 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 the Halloween films. Like you, though, I've always loved Season of the Witch. Uh, that, I'm remaking that movie, it someday, bro. I say it on every video, oh, but it's man. true. I, I'm I gonna remake that, that someday. Eight more days till Halloween. Halloween. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that shit, man. I mean, that was when I was a kid. I always really loved that one a lot. Um, but but the, the the Friday the Thirteenth franchise are like my absolute favorite, and so uh, Part Six, Jason Lives, is my all time favorite. I mean, that's one of those movies for me that's almost perfect. It has it has to do with the fact that it came out when I was you know eleven years old, and so sure. by that point I was like fully like in in the you know Fangoria magazine and the whole bit, and like. Um, I got, I started getting more excited about, you know, horror movies, but, um, so I guess for me, I, I kind of have like a snobbish like way of looking at how Jason should be portrayed. And I right. felt like in that one, he had a little bit too much personality and, and they, 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 they changed him in ways that, that, but don't get me wrong. I enjoyed the hell out. Of it. I mean, it was a mm -hmm. good movie, but, um, you know that's kind of you know that 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 right there falls into perfectly with with tourist trap i mean that that is the same exact format ultimately yeah. um although chuck connor's in uh in tourist trap is a little bit different type of bad oh, guy but mr slousen man that's yeah. how gonna bring him up like he's one of those guys that like you're not sure if he is i mean you know he's the villain but a party was like, there's no way. This guy's too nice. He can't be the villain. And then you finally get the big reveal, and you're like, I knew it, but damn it, I didn't want to accept it. Right. You thought it was going to be his brother. I mean, his that's the whole, the whole premise is, you know, his brother. You're thinking that maybe he's got this, like, kind of like Leatherface situation going mm -hmm. on, and which, which there's definitely a, a, a tribute to Leatherface. Oh, I mean, the, the wig the, and the whole – the mask, and when everything. When chasing her out by the car. Like that oh, yeah. totally is Leatherface influenced right there. It's amazing. I love it. A absolutely. And which, which again, it, it strikes me as amazing that that was a PG film. I, I yeah. mean, you know, like I said, I guess maybe because, well, think about this, the scene where he puts the plaster over that girl's face and she mm -hmm. chokes to death. That is a pretty traumatic for, for anyone to see that. But that in and of itself, I mean, I, I'm kind of surprised, that, you know, I'll, you know. And you can hear her heart stop. Right. And she, yeah. oh, it's, 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 that's probably to me the most like fucked up, like kill scene in the whole movie. I mean, I will say Tanya Roberts with the, the, the knife in the neck is pretty bad, but. That was an awesome scene too. The, yeah, when they had the, nice, the back of the neck, that that looked really good. That's something else I was going to bring up about this movie. The practical effects in this movie are fucking awesome. Like that knife, that looks really good for how they did that. Oh, it it, it it's convincing, and 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 I mean, you know, for for what it is, I'm like, uh, I just think it's sad that they they killed her off. I kind of wanted her to live. Yeah. Well, you thought she was. She, you thought she was going to be the final girl in this movie there for a little. They bit. They made it out to be where she would be, and and she was. <laughs> I think. Besides Chuck Connors, I think she was the, the biggest name or at least went on to do um, the most stuff after it. I don't think she did a whole lot, but I know she did Beastmaster, which, like I said, <laughs> that's a classic for me. So when you think about Tourist Trap, you got to pick one scene. The first scene that comes to your mind when you think of it, what are you picking? Okay, so for me, it's, it's the opening scene at the gas station, and it's um, when the uh, – the thing pops out, the bald, like mannequin thing pops out and yeah. he's doing the <laughs> yeah, the giggling thing. That um, is the first thing that comes to my mind 
every time when I think about it. Just because it, as a kid, oh, it absolutely scared the hell out of me. I had nightmares <laughs> about it. I, I mean, I was afraid to go down to the basement. And, and I couldn't wait to see more shit like that. Right. See, I think the part where they're in the attic and all the mannequins are, like, dancing over top of her. Like, oh, that yeah. part. That part always fucked me up, man. Like, it's one of those things where when we're kids and we watch this movie and then you go to Kmart with your mom and you see all those mannequins, you're like, I know you can see me, bitch. Like, you don't oh, have yeah. to know about yeah. I know what I know what's up. I've oh, I've always had, a, I always had a weird thing about mannequins because of that. Um, it, it, I don't, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I'm not afraid of mannequins, but it's always one of those things I've harkened back to because mm-hmm. it just, you know, like I said, when when I was seven years old, when I first saw it, I had not seen anything like that. Sure. And 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 it wasn't it wasn't something that required a great deal of like analysis. You no. Know? I mean, <laughs> it's just it's in your face, like like scary shit. And um, like I said, you know, that's one of the interesting things about it compared to a lot of other movies from the time, is that uh, it doesn't have sex. It doesn't have drugs it doesn't have a lot of um it's a pretty small cast i'm yeah. sure the but i mean for for what they had to spend on it they did a really good job but and, like um, said, they don't overuse the sex they don't overuse the blood and guts they just no. scare you and that's and that's kind of the thing for me that's always don't get me wrong i can enjoy movies that have sex and gore and all that stuff but it, it's always more to me i'm always more into the psychological aspect mm-hmm. and and that is a movie that that's except for that opening scene is pretty much psychological. Like, like honestly, when I rewatched this before we did this last week, um, I had forgotten or at least hadn't thought about that scene with the plaster over her face. And when I was watching it again, I was just like, it was so horrifying. I mean, it was, it was like, they're sitting there tied up watching Mm -hmm. him put plaster over her and talk about how she, yeah, he's telling her, like, your heart's going to stop before you suffocate. You're going to die of fear. You right. Know? And, and see, it's, it's, I'm so glad you brought that up. You probably can't see it, but that's one of the things I highlighted here in my notes, putting a plaster on the girl's face. That's one of the things that, like, when you watch that, you feel anxiety. You know, you're like, oh, my God, because you can't. I put myself in movies, and I can't imagine right. someone just putting that shit on my face. So you know you're suffocating. Like you said, you, you probably are going to die of fear at that point. Oh, I mean, absolutely. You think about, like, um being in that situation now obviously it, it's you know you, you watch that and you're like the guy's chewing on the rope to try to get himself free and you're like mm-hmm. dude you better can start chewing man <laughs> <laughs> you're like while this is happening and, and and it's kind of funny their response is it's somewhat kind of you know they're not freaking out which is kind no. of crazy but uh you know i think i think overall um it's a. It, I would say it holds up. I, I would say you know it's it's not it's not something that, you know, in my life I've watched a ton of times since then. I have it on DVD, and, uh-huh. and I do periodically pull it out over the years. I mean, it's been a minute, but um, I. Uh, it, it's definitely a, a for your first horror movie something that, you know, for me personally, it, it kind of set the pathway going yeah. forward, and. Uh, I, you know, I love it. It's it's, it's kind of oh, it's you a know. great movie. Like I said, it's it's a good movie. I'm with you though. I have no clue how they managed the PG rating on this movie. You know, I, who knows what kind of release it got, or like how you know how far it was distributed. It might have they might have done that because it was when I saw. I think it was made in 1980, and I saw it in '82. Okay. So. Um, it was fairly shortly after it was made. And, and so I can't really put it in context as far as how it may have looked compared to um, other movies at the time. You right. know what I mean? But um, because I was seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, ultimately it was, it was a pretty psychologically tra- traumatizing film for a seven-year-old kid to, to watch. And I'm most thankful that my parents were not so high strung that they wouldn't let me enjoy stuff like that growing up because right. I wouldn't be the person I am today were it not for 
being able to enjoy stuff like that all my life because, you know, I still get scared. You know, that's the whole point of watching movies like that. But it's something I love so much. I mean. Yeah, it's such a good time, man. When you're watching these, especially when you're a kid, getting those first scares. It, like you said, it shaped the people that we are. I, yeah. Without the music I listen to and the movies I have, I wouldn't be the guy I am today. Hands down, no doubt. Yeah. Um, let me ask you two more questions before we get off here. One, we talked about your first horror movie, Taurus Trap. Now, let me go scary movie on you. What's your favorite scary movie, your favorite horror movie? Um, Favorite horror movie. If I had to pick one favorite horror movie. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to say. I, I guess... Um, Friday the 13th part six Jason lives is probably one one of my go-tos like it, it's probably my favorite because I saw that in the theater as a kid and um I was already a big fan of the franchise you know sure but but it was it was just just it, it that's when it has the the james bond thing or the yeah you know and and and, and i love that, that like you know when they're going to the cemetery to, to for whatever fucking reason they're gonna dig him up he's already buried leave him there right but you know you know exactly what's gonna happen you mm -hmm. you just know it from the, i remember sitting in the theater knowing exactly what's gonna happen and i just yep. love that so much so i mean for me you know it might not be the most you know obscure but 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 it's it's just that's what i love and i also love the the creep show one and two yeah. um part two is is really great i mean i love the first one of course but i really have a a thing about part two as well mm -hmm. i i love i actually like part two more than part one I, i've said that before i i love creep show too um house is still my favorite but man i gotta tell you to me the perfect horror movie cabin in the woods have you seen cabin in the woods of course yeah 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 to me, that's the perfect horror movie, man. I, I could watch that movie over and over. I absolutely adore it. Tourist Trap, we got to give you a record on a skull count. Zero being the worst, five being the best. Where are you putting the skulls on Tourist Trap? I would probably give it three. Three? In retrospect, three skulls. That's a fair number, man, because like I said, it's, it's a good movie, but it's not a great movie. I like the movie. I don't love the movie, but I can see where three is a, it's a perfect number for it. And especially for being 1980, like I said, the biggest thing for me is I love the practical effects in this movie from the pipe at the beginning to the knife in the head to the mannequins. It may not look legit the whole time, but it looks good. It's a fun movie to watch. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why it gets and, and then, you know, probably gets that extra half skull because of that opening scene. It's so yeah. fucked up. <laughs> Well, guys, I appreciate you. I, Benji, I appreciate you coming on. Guys, we appreciate you watching. We'll have some more guests coming up here soon. Remember, let's talk horror. Everybody have a good day.